Ah yes, DreamWorks. These guys have made some of the best animated movies out there. Even though they've made some of these ones as well, I'd say they've still got a really strong movie catalog. But now for the question on everyone's minds. How good are the movie tie-in games? I gotta say, I'm really not sure I have not played these games. But I have played Kung Fu Panda Dojo Mojo at Redemption Arcades. And I have watched the hit movie The Little Panda Fighter. The Kung Fu Panda Trilogy. So let's take a look at this one. Alright, so the premise is real simple with this one. You play as Poe who has to do some reflex testing by hitting all these items that spawn in one of six directions. I mean, this game's pretty straightforward. Just be fast and hit the buttons hard enough that your inputs register. You don't need to do real kung fu on these things. But anyways, the game starts with a choice between dojo and arena. It's like the illusion of choice you'll come across with NPCs in games. The first stage just feels like a tutorial level. You've got plenty of time to break everything. Level 2 will tighten up the time window a bit more. It also has hourglasses that add more time along with these spiky, ball, urchin, mine-looking things. The timing still feels pretty generous, even when hitting the spiky ball on purpose here. There's still enough time to clear it. The final stage is all that matters. It's the Shifu Showdown. It's a fun little reference to the movie when Shifu and Poe are bonding over the dumpling training. If you win this, you get the jackpot. Big surprise. You gotta eat all the dumplings before time runs out. But now the timing window to grab the dumplings is much shorter than the items from the previous levels. To even win this, there are two things that stand in your way. The first one is your muscle memory and reflexes. The more you play this game, the more you're going to notice patterns with how the dumplings are spawning and where to have your hands ready. Also, are these things dumplings or are they steamed buns? Even if I'm wrong, I'm just going to keep calling them dumplings. Anyways, with six buttons, there's only so many hypothetical dumpling and mine permutations you can come across. To illustrate this claim, let's assume every time items are spawning, they can appear in groups of one to three items, where the items are either dumplings or mines, and the order they spawn in is being considered. We are also assuming there is no repetition. So when it's just one item, it can be either a dumpling or a mine occupying one of the six buttons, when considering two items spawning, we use this formula to find the total number of permutations. We only care about two out of six items here, and these items are not allowed to repeat in the same direction, so we need to use this function to remove all the other permutations that are out of this consideration. This gets multiplied by two to the second power. This is because we want to know what combination these items are appearing in. Are they dumplings, mines, or both? Now to look at the potential outcomes for three items spawning. It's the same math as the last step, but we use three instead of two for the same formula. So there you have it. Go memorize all 1092 hypothetical permutations of dumplings and mines. This doesn't even consider what spawned on a previous wave of items. Sometimes you'll see what looks like more than three items spawning at once. To me it feels like two back-to-back -back item waves. Regardless of how accurate this math is to the actual item spawning behavior, just play fast and don't be bad. The second thing you gotta consider is the payout window. Yeah, it's only half a game of skill. There's a setting in the game's manual to specify the target payout percentage. So you need to make some guesses on how many plays were done and what the payout percentage even is. But as a rule of thumb, just assume that after you take a jackpot, the next few games are going to be even harder to win. The more you play this game, the more familiar you're going to get with the tells on when it's ready to pay out. Keep an eye on how many dumplings are needed on the Shifu Showdown. You'll notice that the dumpling requirement usually goes up on a jackpot, and it can come down after more losses. We can assume this behavior is related to the payout percentage. Another warning on this payout percentage happens on the first two levels. The amount of time it takes to beat these is more generous when the game is paying out, and the timing can be much tighter if the game doesn't want you to win. All of this behavior is going to depend on how your arcade has configured this game. This one's actually pretty fun. It feels like a good blend of being both a video game and one of those more interactive physical carnival games. I'm not really interested or attached to a lot of these physical carnival style games. I do recognize that these games can be really good for tickets when played correctly. I'll try some more of these games out, but they're really not my first choice. But the Kung Fu Panda arcade game is a pretty good example of blending both of these worlds. Unlike this abomination. 
One thing to be careful of with Dojo Mojo is the physical hardware itself. So be careful as some machines can drop your inputs if the buttons are not well maintained. I feel like this jackpot is pretty reliable once you're familiar with the configuration. If you're both really good and somewhat lucky, you can still win even outside the payout window. But if you want better odds at securing this jackpot and are a little more on the morally flexible side, that's right, we're gonna cheat. Just gather your friends and play together. Divide up the buttons amongst yourselves and get those tickets. Okay, okay, don't actually do this. I'm not going to publicly condone this strategy for two reasons. First and foremost, it's lame as hell. You might as well just hit up the DDR or pump cab right after and just have each person on an arrow. Secondly, I like the arcades I go to and I don't want to get kicked out of them. The normal staff don't get paid enough to care about what the arcade patrons do, but a manager or owner, they probably will. You know some arcades do have a code of conduct. Like at this one, they have two favorite F-words, and those are fair and fun. I think we can agree that Chopkick Panda is one of the <laughs> Kung Fu Panda is one of the best franchises to come out of DreamWorks. So how is their arcade game going to do on the tier list? I gotta say, it's a solid game, and is very similar to the ones hanging around the A tier. One thing keeping it out of S for me is the rotational payouts. To me, I value consistency when ranking these arcade games. But that said, rotational payouts aren't entirely bad. Since the payout rotates, the game kind of governs itself from how many jackpots it issues, and that makes it less likely to get nerfed. Oh no. Sometimes arcades will encourage these kinds of games by putting higher than average jackpots on them. As long as you can figure out the payout timings, it can be a very reliable option for tickets. 